<laughs> Good morning. I got better sleep last night. But anyway, the title for today is Getting Beyond Distortions, Balancing Warrior and Lover. For most of January, I have been in the warrior mode. As I look at the world around me with all of its distortions, fraud, and oppression, I feel the call to activate the warrior within me. However, this morning in meditation, as I prayed for several of my friends along with the world condition, I felt the call of the lover. I do not mean this in any romantic sense, but rather in the sense of remembering that I came from love, that I am made of love, and that love is the ultimate reality, the essence of all that is. Yes, there are issues that must be dealt with in our world and human experience. If we are to create a world that works for everyone, heaven on earth, we cannot do it without healing and reconciling our tendency to deny and separate those aspects of ourselves that were created and born in our life experience of duality. For me, it is important to recognize my need to center myself to balance the warrior and lover archetypes. <sighs> Yesterday was a day of tremendous stress for me in that I had so many things that I needed to accomplish in the course of that day and there were delays in certain areas and I had a computer issue where I had a document all ready to be printed and some conflict between my programs caused it to distort the whole the whole thing and I thought I was going to have to reformat the entire document it would not print the printer would not recognize the fonts even though I didn't change any fonts or put new fonts in I finally had to reboot my computer and start all over again I lost some things that that were there that I don't know how how they got lost but they got lost and uh, anyway I did manage to get everything done and so last night I was able to sleep better I hardly had any sleep at all the night before and then when I w went to take a nap I have a friend stop in to visit with me in the middle of the day when I was just trying to get one hour rest and, and I got maybe 20 minutes <laughs> anyway uh, that's how my days go and if you all remember those of you that that listened to my first video of the new year where I challenged the cabal I believe it's necessary for people to take a stand and say we do not consent to the tyranny of our governments our governments are out of control uh, it's a locomotive on the wrong track and it's going to destroy lots of things the quality of life will not be able to be maintained with psychopathic control of our governments and institutions that has to be changed but it's interesting that as I dream as I was dreaming before before I woke up um, and as I woke up I pondered I was being invited to to speak in a fundamentalist Christian church the same church that I got married in initially except that that building uh, is no they built a, a larger building up on the hill from where that original building was but I was invited to speak there and and I was actually inviting people uh, that had known me years and years ago to come and then this this black guy came and he started talking to me about centering my heart and stuff like that and at first the warrior in me wanted to resist and challenge him but then I woke up and then I'm pondering the whole thing and I'm saying why would I want to challenge him he's right I do need to center myself I do not I do need to be very cognizant 
recognizing the fact that the that the though the warrior archetype is essential at this time in human evolution it's also important not to forget who we are not to forget the essence not to forget that we all come from love now Aristo challenged in the video yesterday that when I get reconciled with God again and someone else made a similar comment uh, in one of the I think it was a private email on Facebook uh, about getting getting back to the love and and I didn't feel like I had left anything but here's the here's the problem that I see we have such a tendency to think in terms of either or and I believe that that's basically programming of of the matrix I believe it's basically programming that keeps us in the bondage of of warfare and you say Ron but aren't you talking about the warrior archetype that that's an important archetype yes it is an important archetype but by itself it can create distortions if all you focus on is the warrior aspect you're going to be distorted and the whole world manifests and mirrors back to us the distortions of either or thinking and we're constantly dueling the warrior is dueling with the lover the lover fights back and you say lovers don't fight yes they do <laughs> you've never been in a relationship and I'm not even talking now about about just romantic relationships but that's the one that we can certainly see it but even uh, employer employee relationships and parent and child relationships and and friendships even if there's any true intimacy if there's any true honesty in the relationship if truth is being shared and it's not just superficial when you get down to the nitty-gritty of dealing with each other's emotions and and different perceptions and filters and all of the other uh, baggage that come along with <laughs> with our human experience even the lovers fight <laughs> you say Ron that's just the ego that's not the lover quit separating we're one being I'm one being yes I've been fragmented that's what the matrix does it creates fragmentation it creates polarization it creates a situation where we're constantly stressed out because there's always tension between this side and that side and somebody says there's like two wolves which one which one uh, lives the one you feed well you've got to feed them both you can't just kill one now you kill the malignancy the cancer of wanting to uh, of wanting to destroy it's about reconciliation not destruction we only destroy the bad habit we don't destroy the being that generates those feelings the shadow we have to heal the shadow and we don't do that by denying it we don't do that by avoiding it we don't do that by calling it a different name we don't do that by creating a language that that means something other than our actual experience we do it by facing things head-on it's both and we love the warrior and the lover and there's no contradiction there because they're both parts of us they're two sides of the same coin these aspects these archetypes are in everyone and in all of creation in everything if we look for it our job our challenge is to balance these archetypes to heal the wounded child to heal the shadow so that it doesn't operate 
in the denial mode, that it operates in the acceptance mode, in the embracing mode, in the mode of, I want to help. What can I do to help? What can I do to make it better? Not just treating the symptoms, making it better, but healing the cause. And healing the cause recognizes the distortions. I mean, it recognizes the inconsistencies, the incongruities of a system that has gone mad, where you literally have psychopaths in charge. Literally. It's not a figurative thing. That's a literal, that's a literal recognition of the world that we live in, the matrix that we live in. We're all slaves, Neo. Recognize it. You're a slave. We're all slaves till we heal the warrior and the lover aspects and bring them into balance so that they can dance. Dancing is the answer to duality. Making love with the dark and the light, the masculine and the feminine, the spirit and the matter. Making love but we have to allow each role that needs to be played to be played out, not forgetting, not forgetting the goal, not forgetting the destination that we're heading toward, which is creation of a new heaven, a new earth, a new humanity, a healed humanity. A humanity that learns to appreciate differences and celebrates them instead of trying to eradicate them. A humanity that finally, finally wakes up and chooses to do the right thing, which is to allow freedom. I was reading in the Anastasia book last night, and in fact, I thought... <laughs> I thought before I went to bed, I'm going to share some of that tomorrow, but I didn't even think about it till just now. <laughs> when my, my meditation and stuff like that, it never even crossed my mind what I had read. But she says so, so many good things in there. And even, even uh, Vladimir says, I realize that the world is insane. You know, we're all crazy. And we need to recognize that if we're going to heal it. We need to own where we are and stop calling it something else. It's not an illusion. It's a human experience. It's the way that we've experienced life in duality. And it's never been an illusion. It's always real. It's always experiential. It's always meaningful. Denying that is to our own detriment. It will not allow us to become the people we're capable of becoming. It will not, it will not allow us to realize our potential and to fulfill our destiny. Folks, I'm calling on each of you to do what Spirit is telling me that I need to do. Get beyond the distortions Balance the aspects of yourself. Choose both, not either or. It's not a war in which you eliminate the enemy. It's a battle in which you learn to transform the enemy into a friend. And they are parts of you. It's not a fight against the fallen angels because it's a whole fallen creation. Or put another way, it's an ignorant creation. A creation lost in its own tendency to ignore aspects that need to be included. And until we reach the place of inclusivity and get beyond the tendency to separate and fight and go to war, until we can do that, we're going to continue to experience greater and greater, louder and louder voices calling for our attention because the design of the universe 
is to heal, is to reconcile, is to love. Thank you for listening and namaste.